How's it going guys? Welcome back to OpenAL. This is tutorial two. Today we're going to be talking about streaming audio. And just... So uh, OpenAL, you know, if you haven't watched the first video, you should probably watch it. It's got the real intro to this series and everything. This is going to be like just a walking through code and showing you how to get the streaming done. So not quite as fancy as the first one, but still very important and very cool. So I'm going to go ahead and, and talk about all that. But course if you like this kind of content you can uh you know hit the like button don't forget to do what you can to support us creators so we can keep creating and teaching you for free and also if you want to uh, donate uh, I, I do have a patreon so you're welcome over there i uh, went ahead and pulled the latest from what was on the repo and just started updating it now really all i did was add this one class called music buffer which handles everything about the music now uh, in retrospect music buffer might not be the best name for this because well it does have the music buffer it really has everything about the music and it's sort of separate from sound effects because uh, the sound effects are all pulled like you can load up a bunch of sound effects and then play them by their ID so that's how we did the sound effects but the music's a little different I'm making the music so that you're just gonna instantiate one of these classes called music buffer anytime you want music available so basically when you want to play music you have to instantiate a music buffer and give it a file name and there is no default constructor because it has to have some file to play um, and that way we don't pull up a we don't uh, save a ton of music because uh, you know music files can be big sure you could load up a bunch but I'm kind of thinking along the lines of keeping it simple. And in a game, you typically aren't playing two or three music tracks at a time. It's usually just one music track. So that's what I've geared this towards is the thought of just playing one music track at a time. We are carry we're going to hold some private variables here. Basically, this whole class does everything. So I'll just walk through all of that. So of course we need a source and we need to know the sample size that we're going to buffer and how many buffers. Uh, from what I was reading, these seem to be good numbers to work with as defaults, but we could add in features to change these a little bit. And four buffers, that way it cycles through these same four buffers. Like when it's done playing the first one, it marks it as uh, done playing. That way it can put new date in there. And it basically just loops through these four buffers to play the entire song, however long it may be. So that way it doesn't need to take up a ton of memory it just has four blocks of this 8192 and here we have buffers uh, that we're going to generate now sound file we want to keep track of the file and the data from the file so that's why we're keeping this variable here and the reason is we're going to keep loading it into these buffers so as we go along we'll have to keep updating it and pulling it from the data and that's why we keep these and then the info of course of what the data is like and there's our actual pointer to the memory of what uh of the music of the sound and of course we need to keep track of the format too oh we only have two real functions that you ever call and that is play and update aside from the constructor so let's go ahead and take a look at all of that. Uh, let's look at the instantiation first. Mm, not, I haven't put pause and stop in here yet. I probably won't right now. They're not too hard to implement. Anyone is welcome to work on this code if you uh, visit it on GitHub and, and want to play around with putting adding in these functions or making stuff a little better, you're totally welcome to. It might be a good way for, for you to get practice too. So when we instantiate a new music buffer, we need to give it a file name. And what it does is it goes, goes ahead and generates the source, which is like the, what would you call it? The speaker. I was calling it the speaker in the last episode. I don't know if that's the best term for it. Some people call it like a CD player, while the data is the CD. That's sort of similar, but it also kind of works as where the sound volume comes from. So I was thinking speaker, but maybe it's more like a boom box or something. But yeah, it generates that. And we generate four of the buffers. So this gen buffers takes a number and we're passing in four from this constant value and a pointer to those, um, the array of four. So that's going to go ahead and generate all four of those so we can use those. Uh, so we want to keep track of, uh, or we want to keep the frame size later for loading. 
and our sound file is we're just using that library to open our file um, based on the file name and we're doing a read and we want to also pass in this info so it can populate the info which that that will use for the channels and some other things a little later so rather than uh, continuing we're going to throw if this completely fails so if it fails to open your file it's just going to throw and should give you this message that way you can double check that your path is correct and then we just check what the sound or the format was which this should have it so in our channels we just compare it to some values that correlate with uh, al and how it wants to hold them and we just set it to the correct one. So we want to set our format variable to uh, whatever's proper. So we're just doing some checks here. And we just check that it actually has a format. If for some reason it didn't set a format, we're going to close everything and then just throw an error of unsupported channel. That means your music file it has something weird going on that's not very normal. And here is our frame size, which we're going to populate with uh, the buffer, the number of buffer, buffer samples, that's the 8192 number, uh, and it's going to be times by the number of channels, and then we're going to set that, or times that by the size of a short. So that is our frame size. And then we go ahead and allocate all the memory. Oh yeah, just a memory allocation into our membuff. So that pointer will now point right to that data. And here we have the destructor. Now this just does what you would expect, it just frees memory and closes things, includes handling the OpenAL source and deleting that, and the buffers, but it also closes our sound file and sets it to null and frees our memory. So that should be enough anytime you're done with your music to just let this go out of scope and or handle it however you want. But in general, if it goes out of scope, it's done, so it should clean up after itself. Okay, now let's look at the play function. First thing we're going to do is we're going to clear any errors. And with OpenAL, you do that with get error. That's just in case. Really just not necessary if everything's fine, which it should be. But just in case, we're going to go ahead and do that so we don't have any errors right off that are confusing. Usually you want to check for errors anytime you do something. So the first thing we're going to do is rewind our source when we hit play and uh, we're going to set this buffer to zero. So that just basically clears the buffer because we're going to fill it here in a second. And yeah, here we fill the buffer queue. Basically we end up buffering all the data um, for all four queues. So we go off the number of buffers, we just fill all four of those buffer queues right off, uh, right into our buffer data. And there's all the variables we need to do that for that AL buffer data function. And then we check for an error, and if there's an error, we just throw and say, hey, we couldn't buffer, so there's something critical going on there if it doesn't work. Uh, now that it's all buffered up, we can queue and start playback. And you do this with the AL source queue buffers. So you use that function, and then you just hit play on the source. So it is a little different than playing sound effects. You have to use this AL source queue buffers rather than... And that's pretty much it for that function. But it's something you need to do as you continue along with your program is you need to update the buffer stream. So once it gets through those initial four uh, from the starting play, it's not going to do anything unless it has more data to go through. And to do that, we need to call this update buffer stream every once in a while, pretty frequently, really, to just rebuffer anything that's done playing. Basically, we just check the state, see how many are processed, and then we unqueue anything that's already processed. And uh, queue up new data to anything that uh, needs new data. There's a little uh, ending part here that basically just 
to analyze this, it does say if your state is not playing and not paused, so I guess that would be stopped, it starts playing again. Okay, so I think this is the case of uh, you've played off the buffer already, and by the time you got to requeuing more data, it was no longer playing, so this just starts the playing again as it buffers. I'm pretty sure that's what it does. Okay, well that's all the functions in our main here. We just have a few new things. The rest is still the same. I changed this to just init. That way it, we're, we don't really need the, to access the sound device anymore. We just need to initialize it, so that's fine. And we play our two sounds from last time, but now we're also going to instantiate a music buffer called my music and we're going to pass it this town theme dot wave and this was from open game art uh, town rpg now this came as an mp3 and open al doesn't seem to like mp3s so i did have to open audacity here and just go yeah i just drug this file into it and then i went to file export as wave to turn it into a wave instead so that's now on the resources of this repo, and then we just hit play. Now this will play for a very short dur duration unless we actually update the buffer stream. And just as a quick hack to get it to go and get it done, I just put a while one in here. This also means that the program will never exit, so you have to crash the program, but it does get the music playing. So it should play these two sound effects and then play this main music and continue to update the buffer stream until it's done. I'll just fix it right now. Now I could put this update buffer stream within the play of this music too, kind of like how it is with the sound effects, but we're going to be moving away from that going forward because that's really just a, a little hack to see if it's still playing or not. Okay, so now once this is, uh, once this state is no longer playing, it should exit the program. All right, let's let's give it a go. And that'll do it. So it looks like this all works pretty well for what it is. And once again, this is just a sample instantiation of this whole feature of being able to play these things. Feel free to edit it. Feel free to change things. Going forward, we're going to start messing with spatial stuff. So we're going to get into 3D sounds, and it's going to get a little bit more complicated and a bit more code heavy. So I'm going to try to break it up into small sections and just do a little every once in a while. But also, I could really use your support on this series. The more support it gets, the more I'm going to continue it, the more I'm going to focus on it, because I think that makes sense at this point, is to actually focus on things that people would like to see, and, uh, and that sort of thing. All right, well, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.